welcome back to my channel welcome back to my channel if this is the first time that you're seeing any of my videos you haven't seen any others my name is Wandunji. Today, 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 I am going to be continuing my conversations about the Kane Price shortlisted stories that I started in the previous video. Today, I'm going to try and complete two stories, so bear with me if it's not sort of as in-depth as the first video was. I'm just trying to get all the videos out because the announcement is coming soon, and I want to be able to get all my thoughts out before the actual announcement happens and we find out who gets 10,000 pounds. Let's start with The Wall by Marin Hedero, who herself is a refugee from Ethiopia and went through Europe, specifically Germany, before she got to the United States. And she writes about her refugee experience. I was able to read one of her articles about her experience as a refugee. It was a very interesting article. This story that has been nominated for the Kane Prize is the retelling of a teenager's experience as an Ethiopian refugee and how he found an unlikely friendship with a Jewish person of German descent. When I read this story, I had to ask myself what it is that I am looking for in a story. Because as you would imagine, this story happens after the turmoil of leaving your home country, finding yourself in Germany, and having the status of a refugee. All that stuff has already happened, and now this person is settling into their life in the small town which they are now living in. It's not adventurous in the way that I'm used to. There's not a whole ton of world building. This is just a situation in which this character finds themselves and they're just going through the motion. Asking myself what it is that I am looking for in a story when I read it. Am I looking to have something happen with my emotions or am I just vicariously living through someone as they go through just their regular lives? What am I looking for in a story? The second thing that it brought to mind and the conversations that it spawned without the stories of refugees and understanding where it is that they finally are. It is difficult to measure what the ravages of war are. So often we talk about the people who are fighting and how many soldiers were lost. Or even though we talk about how many lives were lost, we don't talk about the displacement of people who have found that they are unable to live in these areas where war is happening. There are generations of people who have forgotten how to farm all the lessons that should have been passed down from one generation to another, about how to take care of their land, about language, all these things get lost when people are displaced. The other thing, of course, that we all know is immigration is tough. It is spoken about as a problem and understood as a problem that the world is now facing. And right now what we have mostly are economic refugees and refugees of war. But when other things start to happen, for instance climate change, there will be climate refugees. So many times we think that the moment somebody lands in a place where they believe themselves to be safe or to have more opportunities if their reasons for immigrating are economic that somehow then things are going to pick up but it's difficult to make friends especially when you don't know the language and especially when you don't understand the culture immigration is tough it's tough on a community that already existed there and it's tough on the communities of people who are immigrating somewhere else Immigration is hard. The fourth thing is the discussion about home. What is home? In this particular story, the main character was born in Ethiopia and then lived for some years in Germany. Learned German, played with people in the neighborhood. They had a great time playing football close to the wall that separated East and West Germany. And that, for a time, became home. But then what is Ethiopia? Is Ethiopia like home home? I think they passed through Italy and then finally got to United States of America, that became home. And Germany for a time was home. And Ethiopia was home. It's a complex thought. What is home? Is it where your memories are? Is it where your childhood happened? What is home? Is it where you are now? I don't have an answer to that. The article that I read that was written by this author was very well written, very well crafted. I enjoyed that. But I didn't enjoy 
this story the same way that I enjoyed her article. The second story I'm going to talk about today is It Takes a Village, Some Say, by Ngwa Mbo Nana Nkweti. It is a story of a well-meaning couple that lives abroad, that doesn't live in Cameroon, but lives abroad somewhere, Ebulaya. They want to adopt a child in order to turn the couple from a couple into a family to have a child that they can raise as their own. And they take unusual methods to do so and end up getting more than they bargained for. For those who have not read this story at all, I do not want to give the meat of the story away because it has an unusual twist in the story that you have to read to experience. For this particular season, this was the most fascinating story that I found uh, because of my taste. I liked the speed of the story and I enjoyed the writing style of the author. Let's talk about what I felt I needed to talk about when I spoke to other people about it. What makes a family? And this is a question that of course comes up a lot, especially when it comes to couples who have chosen to remain child-free. What does it mean then to describe yourself as a family, even though the couple is all that exists. It's also a question people ask you, you know, do you have a family? What they're asking is, do you have a spouse? And together, have you made children? They want to get this information from you so that they can understand you better because that is how we built up our societies to be based on this understanding of a family unit, a husband and a wife, or two parents and children. The second thing that um, I wanted to talk about was this strange place that immigrants find themselves in when they are living in the West. There is this requirement for them to maintain a strange mix of African traditionalism and liberal sophistication which doesn't always gel together nicely. But this is all expected from you, not only by the people you have chosen to live amongst, but also by the people back home. They expect you to understand how to balance these two things together. And sometimes it works very well in certain instances, and other times it just doesn't pan out the way one thinks they should. The third thing is a conversation that needs to be had sort of on an international level, but it's still something that I find fascinating, is this idea that there are all these children around the world who need to be taken care of, and the best way to take care of them is to take them out of their environment and into some other environment in order for them to thrive. Also, what it means to take a child from one family in order to make your own family whole. The desire for this family unit definition, and it's not necessarily all about the child that's being brought in. And also, the number of children who are being taken from places where there is no government regulation and they're being adopted by people who enslave them from the time that they are young. So there are all these things, you know, bouncing around in my head about sort of adopting children from one place and putting them in another situation. And we all assume that it's for the benefit of the child. When sometimes it is not. The fourth conversation, of course, is fertility and what that implies about a couple. What it implies about a man and his masculinity or a woman and her femininity. Whether they are able to come together and have children and if they are not, then how society may or may not consider that to be a failed union. Let's talk about what I learned about writing in this story. There's some descriptions that I love. The booming storm cloud of a woman. She roamed our home, eyes saucer. A childhood friend reneged on her promise to easy bake oven their offspring. The thing that I really enjoyed was the author was unafraid of using expansive vocabulary. There were words in there that are not used all the time. And I mentioned this in the previous video because I enjoy reading a story. I enjoy learning words that I did not know their original meaning, then using it myself when I'm telling a story. Sometimes I find that using the simplest word when you're trying to say something is not always taste 
mouthful. You want a little spice in your story sometimes, I think. That's what I desire for my own stories. And finally, the words and phrases that this particular author used in her story plants its feet firmly in African literature because it doesn't sound like anything else. If you've read young adult literature, there's a certain kind of phrasing, the way that people write their sentences or tell their stories. It sounds very young adult, Western world storytelling. As opposed to, let's say, um, Asian science fiction. That has its own way that it sounds or that it reads and a way that they use language in order to tell the story. And that is also how sort of African literature is different from other literature around the world is the, the phrases and the language that they use. This story was very, very African sort of in that way. And in order to understand what it is that I mean, you gotta read the story. In the description box below, you will find a link to both stories, The Wall by Marin Hedero, and It Takes a Village, some say, by Nguambo Nana Nkweti. So go ahead and check them out. Let me know what you think about these stories and if you have enjoyed them, what it is that you learned about writing from reading these stories. We still have two more stories to go. Until next time, until the next video, I wish you well. I wish you happy writing times. I wish you happy reading times. Enjoy yourself and don't forget to subscribe and come back to watch the last video. Take care of yourself. Bye!